My name is Megan Ross and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the VC Honor Roll for Psychology and today we're going to be talking about operant conditioning. So in this video we're really going to cover four key things. We're going to talk about what is operant conditioning, we're going to talk about Skinner's experiment which is a foundational study about operant conditioning, we're also going to talk about how to identify the different consequences and go through a very nice flow chart for it. We're also going to talk about how stimulus discrimination, as well as generalization, extinction, and spontaneous recovery are applicable to operant conditioning, as people often think these are only applicable to classical conditioning. So operant conditioning is based on the premise that consequences of behavior determine if it is repeated. So this is unlike classical conditioning, where we are focused on involuntary responses and everything's kind of automatic and unconscious. This is voluntary and conscious. People have consequences and then this determines if their behavior is repeated, modified, or if we just don't do the behavior at all. So this is a three-phase model. We refer to this as the ABC model. So A stands for antecedent. So what happens before the behavior? What precedes it? B, what is the behavior? What is the voluntary action that is occurring? C, consequence. So what happens after? What is the environmental event that occurs straight after the behavior? So let's go through Skinner's experiment, and this will give you some context about what this ABC model means. So in Skinner's experiment, there was a box that when pressed would deliver food. A hungry rat was placed inside the box, and eventually it did explore the box and it would touch the lever. So when the rat pressed the lever, they would get food. So after a couple of repetitions, the rat would learn that after the pressing it, they would lead to food, which then saw that then they were hungry, they would do that to feed themselves. So in this case, the antecedent is hunger. So this triggers the behavior, which is pressing the lever, which then leads to the consequence of getting food. Skinner also did some other experiments on pigeons. So when the red light was present, so this is the antecedent, when the bird would peck um, at like a disc that was in the box, they would get no food. However, if the light was green and they pecked at the disc, they would get food. So we can see that there's two different antecedents there, same behavior, but different consequences. So in this, the bird eventually learned that the red light meant no food, but as soon as the light went green, they would get food. So they only pecked at the disc when the light was green. So there are ABCs. Now, in terms of our consequences, you can have reinforcement as well as punishment. So this flow chart will take you through how to identify it. So the first question we start off with is, is the behavior more or less likely to be repeated due to the consequence? If it is more likely, it is reinforcement. So this is something pleasant which makes the behavior want to be repeated. Next, we have to ask ourselves, was something bad taken away or did something good happen? If something good happened, we call this positive reinforcement. And if something bad was removed, we call this negative reinforcement. Now, positive and negative here don't mean good and bad. Instead, they just mean positive plus, so something is added to the situation. Negative, something is removed. Now, if you go back up to the top question, so is the behavior more or less likely to be repeated? If it is less likely, we call this punishment as it is unpleasant. The next question, was it was something good removed or did something bad happen? Now, if something bad happened, we call this positive punishment. And if something good was removed, we call this negative punishment because that give and take. Negative punishment is also called response cost because something is taken away. It is a cost to the learner. Now, let's have a look at how stimulus generalization applies to operant conditioning. So in this case, the learner will exhibit the correct behavior when the antecedent is similar to the condition one, but is not the exact same. So say the pigeon pays attention to a purple light instead of a green light kind of thing. So then that would be stimulus generalization because they've generalized it to a different stimulus. We also have stimulus discrimination. So in this case, um, it only occurs when the response is only to the correct stimulus and not one that is similar. So this would be when the pigeon only pecks at the disc when the green light is present, no other color. We also have extinction, which is the gradual decrease in the strength and rate of the occurrence of the learn response following a period of no reinforcement. Extinction is said to have occurred when the learned response is no longer present. So if the bird keeps pecking at their disc, even though the light is green and they get no food, eventually they'll stop doing it because they're not getting anything out of it. But we do have spontaneous recovery which is eventually they might peck at it again to see if they do get food. So it is when the correct response is performed, despite there being a period of no reinforcement. So they haven't got food for a long time, but they're still going to try anyway. 